Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Ask the Doctor. Last week, the man of the hour was super busy, so we are back, all ready to go. Tonight, we're going to learn how to save your brain, save your life. So just remember to type any uh, questions you have in the chat, because at the end, we'll have an opportunity to speak to the man himself and ask anything and everything there is to do about health. Um, so the just gentleman uh, teaches, trains, and lectures doctors all over the world, put in well over $10,000 of hours, and is here tonight to teach us. So without any further ado, the amazing Dr. Bob Rakowski. Well, you know what, thank you always, Carol. Last week I was actually on a full day, two day webinar, and that's why we didn't have Ask the Doctor last week. Uh, and this week's topic has grown literally every single day. Uh, somehow, some way the universe knew we were having a brain session. So I had question after question after question. And so the goal is gonna be to answer all those that I got in advance and any of those that come in. So as you mentioned, I've been in clinical practice now about 30 years. I've treated world champions from every major professional sport. And I've also taught on six different continents now. So the only one that I haven't had yet is Antarctica, but I'm hoping to get one there soon. I think brain chemistry got a lot more press this year when Simone Biles withdrew from the Olympics for mental health reasons. Now, when she was in Japan, she apparently had been taking a medication for attention deficit and Japan wouldn't allow that. And so imagine if you were, you know, if you ever saw her compete flying through the air with twists and turns and you know that high level athleticism, as much physical it is, it's more mental than anything. So suddenly to take something away from someone that someone's used for a period of time uh, really wasn't fair to the athlete. But at any rate, that's the way it happened at that Olympics. When we start looking at brain health, before the age of 55, the top fear uh, of adults is going to be cancer. After the age of 55, the top fear is Alzheimer's. So your body outliving your brain. So here's a graph of what's projected in terms of, of uh, Alzheimer's progression. And I tend to do better looking at graphs that go up vertical, but here's what we know. Every single decade, they're expecting a very significant increase in Alzheimer's. So what we probably wanna do is figure out what's causing the problem and, and get after that. About eight years ago, I co-lectured at a conference with this doctor, Dr. Dale Bredesen. Uh, and this was before he had published the book, The End of Alzheimer's, but he shared plenty of data. And he said, you know what? There are about 36 known risk factors for Alzheimer's. Uh, and when they use the drug that they use, it's basically like plugging one hole in the roof and leaving all other 35 alone. Amazingly, he said, when you look at all 36 of those, and you know, a lot of them are going to be Greek or Latin to you, because that's, that's the language that they're typed in. Uh, they fall into three categories, either toxins or inflammatory process or decline in growth factors. Amazingly, we have fairly uh, simple solutions. You want to live a clean life. You certainly want to eat an anti-inflammatory diet and use anti-inflammatory supplementation. And then stay young by being healthy. And that's what we know. The longer you're healthy, the longer your brain and body stay young. And so if we were to just categorize that a little further, stress is definitely a cause of inflammation. It's definitely a cause of uh, decreased ability to clear toxins. Over 87,000 registered toxic chemicals in the environment. Malnutrition, the top cause of death in 2020. Interestingly enough, I was doing a lot of health uh, updates, you know, the first 100 or so days of, of 2020. And I encouraged everybody to buffer their stress, start cleaning out their body, cleaning up their diet, nourishing themselves and getting good exercise. And that certainly is a strategy for health, happiness and longevity. So Carol, I want you to tell me if you're actually able to hear this audio. For whatever reason, I played this video uh, on another Zoom and they couldn't catch it. So let me know right away if you catch this. Are you seeing it? Yes. You're seeing it? Yeah. Perfect. University Medical Center talks to his patients during surgery, and they talk right back. Count of 10, okay? Yoke is removing a tumor from this patient and needs to know exactly how much tissue he can cut. The person in the OR that day was Amy Norris. Within 48 hours of her surgery, she was back home and back to playing her violin, something she still remembers how to do, even though she hasn't done it in years. 
oh, I just think it's amazing. You know, I know 10 years ago they wouldn't have been able to see it. You know, and it just amazes me that Dr. Piedra had that ability. Just by talking to Amy, it's obvious this type of surgery helps, but you can't help but wonder if it hurts. The answer is no. They do a local anesthetic on the skin. But the skull and the brain have no pain fibers. That's why we can operate. Doctors will check on Amy every few weeks, but for now, her cancer is gone, and her life is getting back to normal. At Ohio State University Medical Center, this is Mark Powell reporting. Now, we have a lot of insults to a brain, and there's a lot of damage that happens as a result of things that we do, uh, and there's a way we can understand how to change that. You know, when our brain aches, we don't really feel pain but it shows up as mood problems or focus problems or attention problems, right? If you're, if you have a sore throat and your throat hurts, if you have a toothache, your tooth hurts, right? But if your, if your brain hurts, what happens? You have ADD, you have autism, you have depression, you have dementia, you have cognitive loss. These are things that happens to your brain as your system becomes imbalanced. And so what we're going to learn about is how if you change your body, you'll change your brain. The inputs you put into your system create the outputs. So I'm going to build on that concept as we go through. But one thing that I want to share with you is uh, we're going to use a, a metaphor that Dr. Bredesen taught. And he said, whenever there's a problem really with any organ system, and we'll talk about the brain, there are three distinct zones of cells. There are cells that are dead. Well, there's nothing we can do about those. There are cells that are fine. There's nothing we need to do about those. But in between are cells that are functional but not functioning, if we can get function back, we can get function back. So picture this is a diabetic foot that has was gangrene that was set in. And two days from the day that picture was taken, that was the first day I saw this patient, they were scheduled to amputate that foot. They were going to surgically cut it off right there. They said, sorry, it's dead. We're going to cut it off. But look at the foot two weeks later. And I tell people that bodies respond to frequency, duration, intensity, quality, and timing of stimuli. And then look at the foot 17 months later. So if we use this as a brain metaphor, uh, you know, let's say that this was your brain or more specifically a section of the brain called the hippocampus associated with memory. Well, if this is the, the status of the hippocampus, you might not be able to remember your child's name, maybe not even your own name or where you live. But notice probably here, uh, after things have brought back, back to health, you know, maybe you just forget a few details of your childhood, but you still have a very good and functional life which by the way, that's what happened with that foot. You know, this woman walks without a limp and not only did her foot get better, but really her whole body got better. I was giving a health talk about five years ago uh, and this woman's daughter happened to be in the audience and I shared that foot. And she made this statement. She said, you know, my mom is in a wheelchair because she had one leg already amputated due to diabetes. And the doctors are saying they may need to take the other leg too. She said, you know, do you think your protocol will help? Well, I answered it with the way I always answer that. I don't know if our protocol will help, but it sure won't hurt. Well, amazingly, within a few short weeks, uh, the, the wound on the foot had healed. So they know we're longer, longer we're talking about amputation. But interestingly enough, her daughter went to visit her. And when she walked into the room, Donna May looked at her and said, well, hi, Jolene. Well, you might not think that that's a big deal, but for two years, Donna May did not know her daughter's name. Suddenly she remembered it. At three months, the doctors said that her diabetes was in complete remission and her dementia was in complete remission. Now she lived another two years and they were two really good years. You know, I always ask people, you know, what would it be worth to get a couple extra days with your mother? How about a couple extra really good years uh, when she was basically not even knowing who you were for a few years before then. So now we call Alzheimer's a type three diabetes of the brain. And so sugar regulation is very, very important, uh, especially for the body and the brain. We gotta figure out who we need to meet there. There we go, thank you for that. Uh, and so interestingly enough, my favorite superfood, Ganoderma. I decided to do a PubMed search on Ganoderma and diabetes. 120 different citations. Uh, and notice it says it can be preventive and also therapeutic on diabetes. 
So STZ is something that used to be used as chemotherapy. That's the abbreviation of it. Uh, and then doctors realized, okay, this is probably not a good treatment because it immediately kills the cells of the pancreas to make insulin and it causes type one diabetes in the patient. Amazingly, at some point in time, they decided to see if they could find something that could prevent that type of diabetes. And when they gave the animals Ganoderma uh, and STZ, they did not develop diabetes. By the way, I always use PubMed citations to share uh, so people can actually look up the article themselves. So when you look at STZ, it was also known to induce Alzheimer's. And again, this was a study where they gave uh, Ganoderma and it prevented the progression to Alzheimer's. I really like this book and I like the author, Dr. Daniel uh, Amen. He had a TED talk entitled, What I Learned After 83,000 Brain Scans. And within his TED talk, he says, you know, psychiatrists were the only medical specialists that didn't actually analyze or evaluate the organ that they were treating. Then when they started to get high-tech brain scans, he decided to become an expert in that uh, and literally has read over 80,000 of them. But what he quite simply found was that brain health and mental health were very tightly correlated. So I tell people the brain is the most nutrient dependent, energy dependent, stress vulnerable and toxin vulnerable organ. Uh, and over 200,000 medical studies support that idea. And just because I'm a show me person, I decided to take snapshots of those screens so you can see and go to pubmed.gov yourself and see where they are. But here's what he found out. Not only can you evaluate the brain, but you can absolutely change the brain uh, and what he'll tell you is basically you want to get healthy. Your whole body health will certainly impact your whole brain health. And one area that we want to address is stress. So this represents your brain and its blood flow in a relaxed circumstance. This represents your brain on stress. And what we know is that the brain is the most oxygenated organ system of the body. It represents 2% of the body mass, but it actually uses 20% of the body oxygen. So if someone's in a stress mode, we call that a fight or flight mode, they literally shut off their higher thought centers. They shut off their joy centers and things really go on reflex activity. Uh, and you know what, we're meant to get into fight or flight for a very short period of time. But if you think about this last year, there are a lot of people that have been living under chronic stress and we've seen depression, anxiety, mental illness, suicide, substance abuse go up exponentially. Uh, and a lot of us are going to argue that some of that uh, or most of it wasn't necessary. So now we know that chronic stress will actually shrink the brain. Uh, and that is what can happen in terms of brain size in response to chronic stress. The section of the brain related to memory is called the hippocampus. Uh, and that is the area that's most impacted. So I tell doctors, and most of these are available in a lot of countries on, around the earth, uh, the earth. I like to do melatonin, theanine, and Ganoderma spores every waking hour, all three. Melatonin basically puts the brakes on adrenal stress, body stress. Theanine puts the brakes on mental stress. Ganoderma calms the body through a different mechanism, what's known as the parasympathetic nervous system. It calms the mind through GABA, the most calming brain chemical. Uh, and it's even called the herb of spiritual potency. Uh, and I'm always amazed at how powerful this herb is. 2020, I think a lot of people heard about a virus, but here's a fact, malnutrition is definitely the leading cause of death on the planet. And it's been that way for many decades. Actually about 60% of the deaths on the planet were related to malnutrition. Every single country is affected uh, the good news is we have fewer and fewer starving children, but we have an increasingly starved population. So scientists found out you know, five or six decades ago that they could grow a big plant with three elements, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, but it takes 30 elements to grow healthy plants, animals, and humans. Uh, and so if you pull 30 units out for every three that you put back in, eventually you deplete the earth. And that's where we are. So when people eat food, it doesn't have the nutrition that it needs. And therefore they continue to be hungry, even though they've just eaten a bunch because their body doesn't have the nutrients that it needs. So a very fascinating study, it asked the question, 
Does the brain shrink as the waist expands? Uh, and the one word answer is absolutely yes. Uh, and they go through all the data of that. And especially what's worse is cognitive performance, higher level thought, and especially decision making. It's hard to make a good decision as the waist grows. So now if we're going to get leaner, I again will bring up Ganoderma, my favorite superfood. We have it available in coffee and tea and shakes. But here are the known mechanisms of fat reduction. First, it, it improves satiety, so you're not as hungry. Uh, a fascinating animal study where they gave animals the standard American diet, known to be the sickest diet on the planet. And interestingly enough, they absorbed less of the toxic calories from the standard American diet when they consumed Ganoderma. It made insulin work better. That has diabetes implications and fat loss implications. It actually helps burn more energy as heat. And then it changes what is known as the microbiome. 2016 Nobel Prize went to this guy when he talked about a process called autophagy. That looks like autophagy, but autophagy is how they pronounce that. And ultimately what they found is that autophagy is how the body gets rid of bad proteins, scar tissue. And a couple of those are things called neurofibrillary tangles and amyloid, and those are associated with Alzheimer's. So there's your reference there that talks about neurofibrillary tangles and amyloid plaque being related to Alzheimer's. I'll show you a fascinating picture in a moment. But when people are better at autophagy, they age more gracefully. They stay younger, longer. They keep more function in their brain and their cardiovascular system, even their sexual function. Their metabolic health is better. Their metabolism is better. Their energy efficiency is better. Their brain is healthier, happier, uh, and more functional. They have a decreased risk of cancer and they have a decreased risk of cardiovascular disease. So how do we activate autophagy? Fasting, and I'll actually call intermittent fasting because we can't fast forever, but we can have a fasting window that grows every single day. Exercise is important. Coffee itself is amazing. I'll show that uh, there are a number of studies on Ganoderma and autophagy. So that would be one of those supplements. Uh, and we can have Ganoderma in coffee and a ketogenic or blood sugar friendly diet. So there's a PubMed search on Ganoderma and autophagy, 23 different studies. Notice the first one calls out autophagy. It talks about improving mitochondrial function. That makes 94.4% of human energy. And it even protects against a toxin-induced Parkinson's type disease. When it comes to intermittent fasting, what I like to tell people is you should start eating later and quit eating earlier. So notice this intermittent fasting for dummies. In the morning, you have water and coffee. Well, why not coffee that has Ganoderma in it? You'll more protectively uh, act, activate autophagy. Notice middle of the day, also coffee and water. Notice the end of the day, tea and water. Again, if you do Ganoderma infused, you have a major advantage. So simple fact, calorie restriction keeps the brain younger, longer, and there it will keep its size and its function. One way that I, I teach people about the importance of not becoming obese is I tell people, and by the way, they even have the same phrase in Europe, you know, uh, and in Asia for that matter, we've all heard the phrase little old lady, little old man. We don't hear the phrase big old lady, big old man. Why? Because big people don't get to be old. Uh, if they live a long life, they spend their last decade or decades with major medical disabilities. We're going to talk a little bit about neuroinflammation. Uh, and basically what we know is that when the brain's inflamed, Mark Hyman was talking about that, it doesn't feel pain. You can have Alzheimer's, memory issues, personality issues, depression, anxiety, attention deficit, even autism, these are all related to uh, neuroinflammatory process. So certainly after trauma, that's one way that you can develop neuroinflammation. Uh, and this PubMed uses these exact words. Scanoderma decreases inflammation, swelling, and neuron degeneration after a physical trauma to the brain. Uh, and it's powerfully anti-inflammatory by over a dozen proven mechanisms 
as three different PubMed citations show. Ganoderma spores are uh, available in something called the king of coffee. They're also in a nutraceutical. And this PubMed study shows that Ganoderma spores can prevent Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and Ganoderma dissolves amyloid plaque and improves the circulation in the Alzheimer's brain. So by the way, this is amyloid plaque and this is a neuron that's dying, whereas this is actually a healthy nerve cell. So this was a, a rat study, I believe, uh, either rat or mouse, but they gave rats a controlled concussion they gave one group Ganoderma, the other group they didn't give nutritional support. And this was at 21 days. They decided to sacrifice the animals and do a brain autopsy. And you can see the dramatic reduction in amyloid plaque of the brain. A number of citations show that uh, Ganoderma is good for serotonin, that's happiness. Dopamine, by the way, is also happiness, extreme happiness, but it's also focus and fine motor control. GABA is the most powerful anti-anxiety, and then acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter of memory. All of these PubMeds support that. It also induces brain stem cells and brain regeneration, very important, can prevent Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, and is even strong enough to be anti-seizure. There's a book that I read years ago that was very insightful. It was called The Gut as the Second Brain, uh, and we know that we have more brain chemistry in our gut than we have in our head. But notice this says that as we age, our gut microbial population changes. That's the microbiome that leads to gut challenges and it can cause problems like dementia. So wouldn't it be nice if we had a way to keep the, the microbiome healthy? So I decided to do a PubMed search, just the term Ganoderma and microbiome 40 studies since 2015 when they started studying the microbiome. First study that this one came up, it said it reduces obesity. Next one, it's really good for the immune system. Next, it actually can reverse the disturbed microbiome in diabetic rats. So very, very, very powerful. This book, 10% Human, is a very clever uh, title but it basically describes the DNA in all of us. We have a lot more bugs in our gut than we have cells in our body. And 90% of the DNA in our body is from bugs. So the difference between good bugs and bad bugs is what they eat and what they poop. Good bugs eat poop and poop nutrients. Bad bugs eat nutrients and poop toxins. Uh, as disgusting as that may seem, that's actually how our ecosystem works. Recently, they've proven beyond any doubt that the wrong bugs in your gut can actually make you fat. So when I first saw this study, I thought it was just crazy, but then the results were so profound that I've seen plenty of patients benefit. They took two human twins who started out absolutely identical. One became obese, the other stayed lean. So they decided to do a fecal transplant. They took feces from the backside of the obese twin and put it in the backside of an identical twin mouse. They did the same thing with feces from the lean twin on the exact same diet, the exact same quantity, the exact same quality, the mouse that got the obese microbiome became obese. So they were extracting more calories from the food. So I'll reiterate again, Ganoderma is really good for the microbiome. That's good for diabetes, the immune system, obesity, uh, and even the brain. When we look at our toxic world, over 80,000 registered toxic chemicals. Uh, and this was a study on one of the worst toxins ever discovered for the brain. So notice they call this the case of the frozen addicts. Basically, these individuals in Southern California in the early 1980s injected a synthetic heroin called MPTP, and they all woke up the next day with Parkinson's disease. Well, the doctors said, you know what, that really sucks for you, but maybe someday we can find a cure for Parkinson's. So they got some of the drug, and for over 30 years, they tried to find something that could help with it, and they found nothing. You could look up MPTP, uh, and you'll find most of the studies say it causes irreversible Parkinson's until they tried it with Ganoderma. Uh, and this is the name published, uh, the title of the study, Ganoderma Lucidum Extract Ameliorates MPTP-Induced Parkinsonism. 
Uh, and it talks about the multiple mechanisms by which that works, including the process of autophagy. And again, it helped with this other toxin in Alzheimer's. And while we're talking about detox, the liver is the primary organ of detoxification. Ganoderma is profoundly good for the liver. It's proven against liver cancer, alcoholic liver, non-alcoholic liver, hepatitis, uh, liver inflammation, and even toxin-induced liver injury. So very, very powerful there. Since we talked about the big four, stress, toxins, malnutrition, and physical inactivity, physical fitness is a very important factor in long-term brain health. So exercise is definitely known to slow the rate of neurodegeneration and body degeneration. And I happen to like that YouTube video, a 90-year-old woman dancing and, and just really, you know, moving around like a very young, fit human. When it comes to exercise, people need energy. So mitochondria make 94.4% of human energy. Ganoderma makes mitochondria better. And pain is another reason people don't exercise, but Ganoderma modulates the inflammatory process by a dozen different mechanisms uh, and can be very powerful for pain. Also, NeuroTracker is a technology that's been around for over 20 years. There's over 50 published studies. And what we know is that it enhances brain function in every demographic. So whether it's a five-year-old or a 95-year-old, uh, all studies show that within 90 minutes, that consists of six-minute brain games, the brain gets better. So cognition is something that you can also do. So I was asked specifically about anxiety and depression. So notice this, neuroinflammation and anxiety, 784 different uh, PubMed studies. Notice this one says neuroinflammation induces anxiety and depressive-like behavior. Uh, and then neuroinflammation and depression, over 1,600 studies. Uh, and I decided to click on that one as well. That was a 2021 study. And here's what it said. Neuroinflammation is a key factor that inter interfaces with three different known mechanisms of depression all simultaneously. So an inflamed brain is a depressed brain. And an interesting web study, uh, they, they not only called out depression and anxiety, but brain fog, attention deficit, attention deficit, hyperactivity, autism, insomnia, dementia, dementia memory loss, even uh, leading to Alzheimer's, all related to neuroinflammation. So how do you get it? Poor diet, problems with the gut, high stress, not enough nutrition, too many toxins, autoimmunity, traumas, and poor detox. And again, amazingly, Ganoderma helps with every one of those processes. When we look at trauma, it facilitates faster healing. A couple of interesting brain cases. Paul Stamets had a horrible stutter. He was on Joe Rogan's podcast and he talked about how mushrooms cured his stutter. So he's put six years of his life into the study of that. Sachin Patel, interestingly enough, had a colleague who had a, a son with a horrible stutter. Uh, gave him four hot chocolates and within four days, the stutter was gone. And then we've got an absolutely fantastic uh, autism case study as well, where this young boy really didn't want to interact with society. The family was worried about him, he started drinking hot chocolate. He became a new person, much more interactive, and even said he wanted to get a job as a shoe salesman. And there he's helping his dad with a skateboard ramp in the backyard. So whether it's extreme like this dementia that reversed and the foot that was saved, so many things can get better. Uh, and now that brings us to questions and answers. Well, I don't know about you guys, but that was a lot of information to take in and we've already got six questions in the chat ready to go. All right, Xavier said, what do you recommend for someone who is hospitalized due to COVID and pneumonia? Well, we want their doctors to do all the right things to help them. So I, I literally just told this story on, on a Zoom today. So I have a patient in North Carolina, a uh, big bodybuilder. And last year he called me, he said, look, my wife's in the hospital. She's going downhill. They're saying she'll probably be on a ventilator tomorrow. And he asked me, would you do a Zoom with the doctor? And I said, sure. And so literally when I did that Zoom, 
I, I just shared a screen. I went right to PubMed. I typed in Ganoderma and the virus. And guess what? There's a really good study on Ganoderma and the virus, vitamin D and the virus, zinc and the virus, vitamin C and the virus, colostrum and the virus. I, when I showed him all that and the studies, he said, I had no idea. And he said, if that works, I'll do it. You know, she was 35 years old and going downhill fast. Instead of going on a ventilator the next day, she went home. Her body turned around that fast. And so, you know, there are doctors out there that are following a protocol, which is not a good protocol. Uh, we, we lost uh, a friend of the family last week. He went into the hospital. We had no idea. There was a drug that they use called remdesivir. I did a little Facebook live on it and, uh, you know, even the study. But what they found very simply is that remdesivir was used for a pro, uh, uh, Ebola trial years ago, and they canceled the remdesivir part of the trial because more people died on that than any other drug. But they blocked effective treatments and they legislated that the hospitals must use remdesivir. So there's something very wrong uh, at all levels with how this is being managed. So if the doctor is open to, to looking at PubMed studies and, and basically doing what's necessary to save the patient, all the things that I mentioned uh, are very, very, very helpful. And I'll, I'll basically uh, put those in the chat and you can copy that. And it's as easy, I shouldn't say as easy as, but uh, go to, you know, go to pubmed.gov and you can find the references for all of these. So I put that in the chat. Perfect. Next question. What do you recommend for someone who has lupus? How can they improve their immune system? Well, I, I've actually done an autoimmune mini course and I'll put that in the chat too. There's six universal immune modulators. Ganoderma is one of them, a Chinese botanical called perilla seed, DHEA, vitamin D3, um, omega-3 resolvins, uh, and then essentially sealing and healing the gut. And so I, show the, I share the PubMed uh, when I uh, did the YouTube video. And I have, I'm starting to put more things on my uh, YouTube channel. Let's figure out how to get that there. Now I wonder, Carol, I think I'm just going to message that to you uh, and okay. have you put it in the chat, if you don't mind. Certainly. Here it is. I'll get that after the next that question. A really good one. OK. What do you recommend for someone who gets the job? That's a tough question. You know, I mean, some people are saying that um, NAC might help. Some people are saying some type of dandelion leaf extract might help. I don't know that we know enough information about it just yet. If you get one, don't get two. That's for sure. Uh, and so I, I have a blend of patients. I have a number of patients that have developed different autoimmune circumstances after that. I have some that for now seem to be fine. And I'm praying that that's a lot of people and that they stay that way. But, you know, here's what we know. Uh, and now that they've done a, a really hard look at the database, it turns out that the jab is actually killing twice as many people as it appears to be saving. Uh, and so, it, you know, it was never justified. That's for sure. Okay, next question. Carol, was um, that the right... Uh, that doesn't yep. seem like the right link. I know it's a very big link. I'm going to find a way to shorten them for you. I'm going to I'm going to do it a different way too. Well, we can do a Bitly link for later. I can do all of those for you. Um, sorry, just trying to catch back up here. Um, do you have suggestions for people diagnosed with epilepsy? Yeah, so Ganoderma is actually anti-seizure, but I actually did a uh, 
YouTube video on seizure protocol, and there's several things that can be helpful. So let me see if I have that one easily accessible. There's a lot of things that can help. That one I'd probably have to go to my YouTube channel, but let me just see real quick if I can do that. Mm -hmm. That was a faster link I just put up. Wonderful. And All right, yeah, I have a seizure protocol that I will share. Carol, I think I'm getting more efficient. Yay, in time, in time even I can learn. Yay. You'll get there. Okay. My goodness, the man who knows everything. Okay, uh, from Claudio, happy, 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 super, 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 duper, 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 Dr. Bob. Um, question for this evening is on kidney and gallbladder stones, cause and remedies, please. Well, they're different. Um, so kidney stones, they're very, very fascinating. And, and some people suggest that people have a sensitivity to calcium oxalates, even though there's a number of different types of stones, but there's a, an herbal formula that we use here that the primary herb is called gravel root. Uh, and it's perfectly safe in pregnancy. I actually had a, a woman who was basically nine months pregnant with a nine millimeter stone. We had her take some droppers of this every 15 minutes. And I think it was within five hours, she passed the stone. Uh, I, I was lecturing on the road and I had an individual in Boston that you could tell he was in severe pain. He had a very severe kidney stone and he was scheduled for lithotripsy, which is where they do ultrasound to break up the stone. And People that have had that done, they say it's like being kicked by a horse in the rib cage many, many times. Uh, he asked me if, if I, my office would FedEx first morning delivery, uh, you know, bottles of this Katie Lithic, the gravel root formula to him. He took it every hour uh, and he passed his stones before his litho trips he was scheduled. We've got really good success with that. So, you know, if we have a way of getting it to you, that'd be awesome. I, I think it's kind of hard to get certain things into Canada. Excellent. Okay. What would you recommend for fatty liver? How many spores and or anything else? Well, spores are a good start, but so the medical literature says this, there's alcoholic fatty liver and there's non-alcoholic fatty liver. Uh, and alcoholic fatty liver, you cut the alcohol and you detox the body and you, you eat better and cleaner. The non-alcoholic fatty liver <clears throat> is considered the first major metabolic abnormality of insulin resistance, which is pre-diabetes. So you wanna eat a better diet, exercise, do ganoderma spores, no processed sugars, alcohol, soft drinks, stuff like that. Uh, carnitine and lipoic acid are also two things that can work pretty well uh, to help with fatty liver. Uh, and also, by the way, inositol and choline uh, can be helpful and, and those are readily available. I, I saw Xavius had a question about the um, the reference. So let me find it. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to put a couple things in the chat. Um, let's see how this one goes. This one's long. And you're going to want to copy that. Did that copy all that or nothing? None of it. Probably none of it. Hmm. Let's see how I can copy that. Come on now. Uh, any luck not yet but i'm going to be like napoleon i'm going to make my own luck so 
That's the best way to do it, Dr. Bob. You'll figure it out. We got faith in you. <laughs> Ah, okay, Xavius, I'm putting this in the accelerator group. So that's the best way to get that info to you. That's one thing. And then I've got to find the other. As long as it, ah, sorry, this page isn't available. How amazing how that works. Hmm. So that was published yesterday and taken down before today. So one of the things I sent should be a value to you. Yeah, this is a very long one that you just sent us. If you guys don't have, are not in that accelerator chat, just message one of us and we'll make sure you guys get added. So we don't have the other reference at this moment. Uh, it's been taken down. We get a lot of that. So, yeah, you know, so what's interesting is they did not, uh, you know, our regulators shot down the booster shot. They said, no, absolutely not. And two of the top pharmaceutical high ranking officials resigned. They said, you know what, we're out of here. And, <clears throat> and that was where the data came out that they, it appears the jab is killing twice as many people as it may save. And probably the biggest crime on that is it's killing young people. It's killing teens, it's killing 20 year olds, it's killing, you know, and the, the people that seem to benefit are, you know, 70 and above with multiple medical morbidities. So maybe they get it, but young people, absolutely not. Yes, now they want to vaccinate children up here to make sure that they're going to elementary school. Well, no more elementary school. There's there's no sense in that. No. Nope. Okay, so we do have a few people that need to be added to the accelerator group. So I'm going to try and add them. And if not, I will need you to do that, Dr. Bob. Uh, is it uh, is that copyable? I don't know why I could copy to the accelerator, but I couldn't do it I can here. Do. Yeah, I can't see, seem to do it here. I don't know why. I, you know I, what I might be able to do? Hang on, let me try. I have an idea. Um, you know, I could actually, uh, what I did is I copied what was on the website, but now what I, maybe I can do is this. It was originally in French, but that's easy enough to get. Uh, here's what I'll do. I'm going to put the French website and it's easy enough to translate into English. So that can happen. So there it's you go. In the chat. Oh, wow. There it is. Okay. So hopefully that helps guys. And I'm still going to try and get you guys into accelerator. Any other questions tonight, my friends? Sure, one more for the road. Go for it, Claudio. I have a lot of friends at work actually calling me and asking me if I were, I'm not going to get uh, the vaccine, but they're all asking me which one would I take or recommend. And I would, I don't know which one to uh, advise them of taking any recommendations. On well, certainly not, certainly not one that's the genetically modified one. So there's ones that they use in, in Europe. And I believe it or not, I think it's not allowed in your country. But it's actually like an old traditional vaccine that supposedly uses an attenuated virus instead of remodifying, you know, changing the genes in your body. So uh, I wouldn't get any, and I would do whatever it took to protect myself and my family. That's for sure. Um, I looked ahead, and it's it's interesting because we get so many similar questions. I created a YouTube video on Ganoderma and blood thinners. And here is a very simple answer to that question. Um, and I am getting more efficient, I think. Let's see. In, re in regards to the blood thinning? Yeah. I created a video on that because there's, you know, a number of people have asked that. And so, yeah. It, 
what is so fascinating is there's there's so much bad information and it almost seems there's more bad information than good information legitimate information and so what i've told everybody to do is there's a simple test uh, which is called PTINR, prothrombin time with international normalized ratio. And you can tell, you know, if you're on your blood thinners, get a baseline, see where it is. You'd be surprised how many people are over medicated on blood thinners and they're at risk for a bleeding episode. So, you know, I was in, in Canada, uh, it seems like it was two years ago now, it might've been, but I was driving past Mount Tremblay. Uh, and as we were driving past there, the Eric Brisson, who uh, was on, on the team in Montreal, he said, well, yeah, Dr. Bob, that's where Natasha Richardson died. And so that was Liam Nielsen. She's an action hero's wife. She was skiing on Mount Tremblay. She was on a bunny hill and she fell and kind of bumped her head and she was laughing. Well, uh, an hour later, she was dead. Uh, and then you have to really dig through the data. And they said, you know what? here's what we think happened, her brain bled out and all that pressure in the brain, her brain actually crushed itself under the bleeding of her blood and she died. And it's because she was on blood thinners. So, you know, uh, get the PTI and R, there's so many people that are being over-medicated and bleeding too much. And a lot of things they put people on for, for blood thinners. I mean, sometimes it's like a heart arrhythmia and most of the time we can make that go away in, in two weeks to a month with the good nutrition protocol. So, you know, I, I think a lot of people are waking up to, there's a lot of problems with medicine. And if you think a drug's gonna fix everything, we're seeing problem after problem after problem after problem. The drugs that are working are being blocked. The ones that are harmful are being mandated. Okay, one other question. Um back to stones um can organo gold products dissolve gallstones i don't know you usually don't need to d dissolve a gallstone there's a, a gallbladder flush uh which is fairly easy to do uh you can you can google that you can youtube it uh so you know i've got a, a video of a guy that had an autoimmune liver disease we had him doing gallbladder flushes and he passed a number of gallstones and his autoimmune liver circumstance went away and it's interesting because he showed it with his fingers how big the the stone was and it was about like this big right if you can see how big my finger is <clears throat> well i was happened to be lecturing in los angeles when i when i played that video and i can picture it like it was yesterday in the 10th row on the far left of the room this guy stood up he says okay you know, he says, I got to tell you, that's a bunch of crap. He says, I'm a, I'm a surgeon. I've removed well over a thousand gallbladders. There's no way you can tell me that a stone that big can get through a hole that big, you know, like using his pinky. And sometimes my brain works faster than my governor did. And I just kind of looked at him. I said, how big is a baby? You know, and, you know, the whole audience just started laughing. Well, I, I certainly didn't want to make the guy look bad. But I told him, I said, you know, I have seen patients, they're so shocked at what they pass, they bring it in and they show it to me, their gallbladder inflammation goes away. In this case, this guy's autoimmune liver circumstance went away. And it's not like it was, you know, six months after, it was like the next day he was dramatically better. So, you know, pretty fascinating. So bodies are amazing, gallbladder flushes can work, but they always tell you, you have to use that qualifier. There is potential for the stone to get stuck. What did they do then? Then they remove the gallbladder. So uh, since Ganoderma is a really good uh, anti-inflammatory, that will likely help the, the gallbladder pass the stone with a lot more ease. Okay, perfect. I believe that is the last of the questions for this evening. I think we've got lots of info for tonight. So would we all like to unmute and say thank you to Dr. Bob? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bob. Thank you, Dr. Bob. Thank you, Dr. Bob. Appreciate you. Thank you. Dr. Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.